today we're going to be looking at another one of Styropyro's crazy videos. Specifically this one here on a DIY overclocked plasma globe. <laughs> Just like those ones you play with at the museums of natural science. Except this one's at a million volts. What could possibly go wrong? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some. Get right into it. I recently got a deal on some plasma globes on eBay. And while they are pretty neat, I feel like with the right modifications, they could be a lot cooler. <laughs> now I have a general rule that before I go tearing into stuff, I like to at least try the original product. Now what can you do with a plasma globe? Well for one, if you put your hand on it like this. So how these things work is high voltage, high frequency, AC power. And the current flows through those little filaments in the uh, actual globe. And all those fun colors you get really depends on what kind of gas you use. Typically noble gas, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, things of that nature. And the reason why it follows your fingers is because you conduct electricity. And that is why electricity is a hazard that everyone, including people in nuclear power plants, regularly brief their staff on. <laughs> So yeah, you guide the lightning. The thing isn't even a fire hazard. Is that too much to ask for consumer electronics? Now luckily this whole fire hazard issue can be simply solved with just a roll of aluminum foil. But first a warning. The craziness that's probably about to unfold over the next 10 minutes or so was done completely for educational purposes. In fact, if you were to try any of this stuff at home, you'd probably die. So yeah, please don't do this at home. I love his disclaimers. They're so good. <laughs> A piece of aluminum foil on top capacitively couples to that inner electrode. And now you can see it can draw more current. Now, you can even pull a little arc from the surface, which, oh, look which at is that. pretty nifty. Now, I wonder what it feels like on my finger. Ooh. <laughs> it actually tickles. Yeah, you're going to get a little oh, wow. something. It's cool drawing an arc from my finger. All right, now it's time for more. All that charge stored on that aluminum. The uh, foil touches me and can complete the uh, circuit through ground. So, <laughs> see if it likes the match. There's a rule about human grounding devices. The rule is don't. <laughs> That's arcing. This is so small though, it's... yeah. <laughs> He's, he'll be fine. Not quite lighting yet. One eternity <laughs> later. Yes! There it goes. Cool. Sweet! That was actually pretty cool. Alright, now I'm bored. Plasma globe, and, and what can I say? I'm not impressed with this driver. I feel like Nikola Tesla, who actually invented the plasma globe, would be rolling in his grave if he saw this driver. Like he was doing this stuff over a hundred years ago, and this stuff was way better than this puny little thing. If you go on Google and look up how to make a high voltage circuit, this is literally going to be one of the first results. It's like child's play in the realm of high voltage electronics. But regardless, this thing works by using this uh, 555 timer here to generate a, a square wave signal to this power transistor. And then this feeds into this flyback transformer where the uh, rapidly changing current uh, causes a relatively high voltage to be produced. Sounds straightforward enough. It's fed through this uh, long lead here into the plasma globe. So how do we make this thing stronger? Well, the dumb way would be to just feed higher voltage into the thing, but that's probably just going to blow the timer before anything interesting happens. So I guess the next best option is to uh, feed a higher voltage into just that transistor itself. Or even better, use this transistor as an amplifier to feed an even bigger transistor and then dump even higher, higher voltage into that. There you go. I was wondering what the voltage rating for that, <laughs> for that device is. <laughs> so let's dive right into this, because what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> so let's start feeding a little bit of voltage there. And, hmm, oh, it's way over. What's going on there? So apparently due to my sloppy wiring, I ended up frying this little power transistor. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's not like it really mattered in the first place. So now I just have the output of the 555 directly driving the gate of that MOSFET. So let's give this another go. Oh, sweet. Oh, something broke. <laughs> Did it really fry that easily? No, it's trying to go. Oh, there it goes, there it goes. <laughs> Oh, well look at that. I love when that happens. Not sure what he cranked the voltage up to, but... <laughs> Not even the slightest glow? So that's how it's gonna be, is it? <laughs> Dude. Okay, I, I did not see that coming. Just smash it, yeah. 
all right, screw this. I'm breaking out my massively <laughs> overdriven car ignition coils. Because if this doesn't do it, I don't know what will. Whoa. All right, let's give this thing a try. Microwaves are full of parts that are useful for the electronics hobbyists and can be sourced for cheap or even sometimes free. So let's tear this thing down. Now I should point out that nobody without extensive electronics experience should ever go poking around in a microwave. Get with the microwaves. It's like his, uh, it's like his thing. Reason being, you touch the output of this while it's live, you're no. dead. No, yeah. <laughs> touch this without discharging it first, you're dead. You break this and inhale the dust, and before long, beryliosis comes creeping in, slowly suffocating you and sucking every bit of life out of you until finally you're dead. I love the hazard briefing here. Yeah, forget all the people who are afraid of uh, ionizing radiation, uh, radio radioisotopes. These microwaves tear apart one of these if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, it's a it's a legitimate it's a legitimate hazard. There's there's all kinds of stuff that can get you. Anyway, the main thing that I'm looking for is this transformer here. Now, unfortunately, it only does a little over 2,000 volts, but luckily I can string a few of them together for higher voltages. But I'm going to need more microwaves. I know this is just for being silly, but the backwards hammering and <laughs> him throwing everything around. Gotta love Styropyro. Now this arrangement gives a voltage of about 10,000 volts, which is certainly impressive, but still off by a factor of 100 of what we actually <laughs> want. So now what? Well, this is where we get to look back at the ideas of Nikola Tesla. Uh, not that one. And definitely not that one. He didn't even work on that. Can we just stop it with this whole free energy conspiracy? Oh, now this... Mm. This is that same sort of goofy stuff that probably results you that that will probably result in you getting high doses of radiation by selling all these bizarre products that claim to be able to make water more wet or these wellness products that to give you psychic powers or boost your boost your health and a lot of these crazy things. It turns out that some of this stuff is actually radioactive, basically just putting thorium on you. I'll pin a comment down below if you want to find out more about all of these crazy negative ion and scalar energy and all this other crazy stuff out there. <laughs> ah yes, that one. The magnifying transmitter. Or even better, the modern day equivalent, which is the aptly named Tesla coil. The Tesla coil is a type go. of step-up transformer in which the primary and secondary sides form tank circuits, and they're tuned so that they resonate at the same frequency. They're capable of generating extreme voltages, well in excess of a million volts. It definitely looks terrifying. And I went ahead and added some warning stickers there. Nice, actually putting the warning stickers, yeah, high voltage. Was that do not touch, will hurt the whole dying radio frequency. Oh, he's got some weird Illuminati. Man, why do we even do this kind of stuff? That is so crazy. So it's time to actually test this thing out with a plasma lobe attached. And I added this nail here as a breakout point. That way I can feed the output of the coil directly into the globe. By the way, in nuclear power, never had to use something up to a million volts. About the highest volt. The voltage of the, of the main generator output voltage is only 25,000. Now that gets stepped up to to 345,000 and the switch yard for, for distribution. And really a lot of that is kind of a function of where the power is going. The nuclear plant I worked at was in a somewhat remote area. So those transmission lines and they're at a high voltage mainly to minimize transmission losses. There are some in even re more remote areas that can get up to 500,000 volts. But million volts, uh, not really, <laughs> not really used a lot in nuclear. All right, here, we, here go. we go. Let's hope it doesn't explode on the very first run. Whoa! Look at that. <laughs> okay, I can kind of understand what they were getting at with the new, you know, psychic crazy stuff. It looks like one of those crystal ball thingies with the whole Tesla stuff, but ah, this is so much cooler. Check out those amazing patterns. But still though, it's not shooting arcs out of the glass. 
but I think I can fix this. <laughs> Just like I did earlier. I'm going to stick some aluminum. As the exact opposite approach to uh, electrical safety in terms of arc flashing, arc blasting. <laughs> Well, I mean, not blasting. Maybe he just wants to see the flash stuff, but just crazy. So the arc should just shoot straight through the globe. Okay. There we go. Now this time I actually have five pieces as opposed to one. So let's see how this thing performs. Who didn't see that one coming? You'd think after all the time I just spent building this new driver, I would have remembered to actually attach the plasma glove to the thing. But as they say, science can't move forward without breaking some omelets or whatever. There is a whole genre of like procedural critical steps, if you will, whether it be in nuclear um, or aviation or pretty much anything, anything with critical equipment or operations. That yeah, it had there are steps and procedures that are added because of things like this, like forgetting to shut a door, forgetting to turn something on, forgetting to open a valve, and that's why there are notes and cautions, and that even reference a condition or an event report for something like this. It's uh, it's human nature. We all learn more from uh, from things like this. And it, yeah. For good I stuck measure. another globe on the driver, and this time used some zip ties to keep it held down. Zip and ties. For my experiment, I want to see if I could use this thing to remotely power up another plasma globe. Cool. It Let's works. Let's give that a try with some fluorescent tube lights, aka the much less awesome plasma globe equivalent. Look at that! Wow. And they're like what? A meter away? Something like that? <laughs> Get some. That is so cool to watch. Well, let's test it with some very special balloons. Balloon. Whoa! <laughs> what was in that balloon? <laughs> Amazingly, for all the experiments you just saw, I was only running the power supply at half the power I built it for. Wow. But even so, the voltage it generates is so high that it arcs back to itself. Uh, the applications of plasma from, from things like nuclear fusion to fun little toys to this one, somewhere in between. No, you can't create nuclear fusion using these sort of stuff. This will get you some high voltage, which will result in high temperature, but... You're going to need, you need pressurized environment and a significant confinement time. That was too, too spastic of, an, uh, of a device for something like that. But yeah, it's cool seeing those. And I enjoyed playing with those little uh, things when I was a kid. Wouldn't want to put my finger on this one, though. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.